Hello and welcome back to Spartan Student version 9. Today we're going to be going through tutorial number 9 which is called Organic Reactions. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is head to the Activities menu, click Tutorials, and then you're going to scroll down to Organic Reactions and click that link to open the PDF. I already have it open in another window here so we're going to go ahead and get started. The first thing that you're going to want to do is build one pentene. So I'm going to do that like this. I'm going to add an sp3 carbon, another, a third, then I'm going to select the sp2 carbon, add that here. I'm going to use this by dragging on the left side under that red rotation arrow. Uh, you'll see this bond has that red arrow around it that's uh, supposed to uh, let you know that that's what you have selected to rotate, and then I'm going to Make sure that this double valence is facing up and add another and you'll see we have built one pentene um, and it looks much like the sketch in your PDF. So the next thing that we are going to do is guess a transition state. So you, you can click this guess transition state icon or you can do that from build guess transition state. And one after the other, we're going to click on the bond labeled A, this double bond, and then the bond labeled B, this single bond. Then we're going to do C and D, these two single bonds. And lastly, we're going to do bond E. We're going to click the hydrogen it's bonded to, and then we're going to click this uh, terminal methylene carbon. And you'll see this dotted line here represents that this bond will be broken and a new bond will be made between this carbon and this hydrogen here. So we're going to click this guess transition state button and you'll see this down here has populated. We have the transition state in our database. And the next thing that we're going to do is set up a calculation on this. So we're going to go to set up calculation and we're going to do a transition state geometry calculation and we're going to use hartree fock and the 321G basis set. We're going to check this infrared box and submit. I'm going to name this in reaction 1 pentene and save it and we're going to allow this to run and I will come back to you once it is completed. Okay so just a few moments later we've got our data back we're going to open the spectra panel and we're going to add the calculated IR spectrum that we just got from our calculation. And then we're going to click the tables here and select this first frequency, which is um, an imaginary frequency that's designated with the I in front of this number. And next we're going to click make list. So for the amplitude here, we're going to type 0.3 or click 0.3 and then we are going to click make list. We're going to leave uh, the steps at 11. Okay so we've just generated a new file. We're all done with the first one so we can go ahead and close this. I don't need to save the changes there. Um, but you'll see here we have a document with 11 molecules and it represents a transition state here. And so what I'm going to do is set up an energy calculation using hartree fock and that same 321G basis set. And we want to make sure that global calculations is checked. That means it'll run on all 11 molecules in the document. So I'm going to click OK. And then before we run this, I'm just going to queue some, some surfaces that we're going to want to look at after we get the uh, calculation returned. So we're going to click More Surfaces. And then we're going to select for the surface Density Bond. And then we can leave the property at None and click Apply. So we'll have that queued. And then the next one we're going to do is Density Bond. And for the property, we are going to select potential and then we're gonna click OK and so you'll see these two are queued and last thing we're gonna do here is exit out of that we're gonna submit this calculation and I am going to name it in reaction one pentene sequence 
and we're going to let that run. I'll come back to you once it's completed. Okay, we just got the results back, so I'm going to first add the density, the, the bond density, and we're going to click through and you can just see based on these sort of gray clouds that by the end we have two distinct molecules here and if I were to click play then we can just watch as this hydrogen bond uh, this hydrogen is transferred uh, here the bonds broken over there and a new ones made there okay and then if we wanted to look at this map what we can do is make sure that this is right and then we can get a similar view but we'll see the electrostatic charge as well all right so we are all done with this document we are going to move on to an sn2 reaction of bromide and methyl chloride so firstly we are going to build methyl chloride so i'm going to grab an sp3 carbon and a chlorine and add that to an open valence just going to rotate this and then what we're going to do is select bromine and you can hold the insert key on Windows or the option key on Mac and then double click on screen um, and we're going to place it kind of opposite the chlorine here. We're going to hold the delete key and delete this free valence. And then what we're going to do is click view. We're going to select guest transition state. And what we're going to do here is click on the, the uh, bromide. And then we are going to click on the carbon and then back on this bromide. So you'll see that a new bond is being made between these two. Next we're going to click on this CCL bond and we're going to click on the chlorine and a second time on the chlorine and what we're doing there is just breaking this bond. So we're going to click the guest transition state and you'll see here we have at the bottom this SN2 methyl bromide plus chloride anion reaction and we are going to select from the geometry menu the measure distance tool and then we are going to click on this carbon to bromine bond and we are going to set this to 3.8 and click enter so you'll see that that extends the uh, bond length to 3.8 angstroms now what we're going to do is click constrain distance we're going to select that tool from the geometry menu and we're going to click on that same bond and we're going to click this lock button to constrain the distance check the profile button and in this second drop down we're going to type 1.9 so we're going to go from 3.8 to 1.9 angstroms and we're going to up the steps here from the default 10 to 20 okay so I'm going to click view you can see that we've set this constraint here it's represented by this little blue sort of icon. So I am going to set up a calculation here. We're going to do an energy profile calculation. We're going to do this in water instead of gas phase. And then we're going to select Hartree Fock and we're going to do that 321G basis set. We're going to change the total charge here to anion and then we're going to submit the job. So I am going to name this bromide plus methyl chloride and we're going to let this run. I'll come back to you once it's completed. Okay, so that calculation has just completed. It's going to ask if you want to open this auxiliary file, so we're going to say yes. And we have a different file here. Uh, we're all done with the first one, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. 
Um, so the first thing that we're going to do here is open the spreadsheet and we are going to click an open header and add from the molecule list tab this delta E, the relative energy. And so this is all relative to the first entry in the list. And as we step through, we can see how the distance is constrained. And you'll see the energy start to go down here. OK. So then what we're going to do is click on this constraint marker, and we are going to post it. So I'm going to spread this out a little bit. So here in the spreadsheet, you can see our constraints and our delta E. Next, what we're going to do is bring up the properties dialog. We're going to click on bromine to get its atom properties. And next to electrostatic here, we're going to post that to the spreadsheet as well. So you can see the electrostatic charge changing um, across the, uh, the distance that we constrained. Now we're going to close the spreadsheet and close this properties dialog and we are going to make a plot. So we're going to click this little plus to add a new plot and on the x-axis we are going to do the relative energy and then we are going to do electrostatic as well as constraint from the y-axis. I'm sorry, I got that wrong. We're going to do the constraint on the x-axis and then on the y-axis we're going to do the delta E and the electrostatic. Okay, so you'll see this chart here. We're going to edit the plot and we're going to make a point-to-point -point curve and we are going to set the x-axis range from 4, well, 4 to uh, 1.8 here. Then we'll click Done. OK. So then we're going to edit this, and we are going to get a point to point on this curve as well and we are going to keep this <laughs> same range from 4, point, uh, 4 to 1.8. So we've got the curves here and then you'll see that this circle represents the member in the list that you're looking at. So if we step this way we will see that we start at this energy. It gets higher and higher until a peak and then it returns back down to a minima here as the uh, as the bond between the bromine is made and the chlorine bond is broken. And if you wanted to look at the electrostatic charge, you can see it stays quite low for bromine when it's unbonded. And then once this bond is made and the chlorine starts to go away, you will see the electrostatic charge start to increase. So some questions you might ask yourself are, are these related? We're going to take a look at the surfaces here, and we are going to click more surfaces. We're going to do a bond density, and we're going to leave none on the property, and we're going to click OK. So that'll start that. Alright, now that that has completed, we're going to check it, and I'm going to exit out here. And you can see the density of electrons uh, and uh, ar around the bonds here, so what we can do is, here we have the, uh, the, the chlorine fully away, and you can see a bond is made here between the carbon and the bromine, but if we step backwards, it will invert and you'll see that we have a bond here between the carbon and the chlorine and the bromine is on its own out here. So if we wanted to watch the reaction play out, the substitution there, a 
Okay, so we are going to uncheck this box and we're just going to watch it happen again. And you can see these change. And that's going to do it for today. So we've gone through a couple of different organic reactions. And in the next tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at the tutorial number 10, which is on biomolecules. So we'll be looking at some proteins and, and nucleotides. We'll see you then.